Hello fellow Unreal Engine developers. Today I'm going to talk about virtual shadow maps in foliage heavy landscapes and how performance can be drastically improved by changing one simple setting. Let's get straight into it. In my video last month for foliage hints and tips, uh, the first tip was that if you had a lot of foliage in your scene, don't use virtual shadow maps uh, because it uh, caused a huge performance decrease. But uh, then I did this video last week on creating this glacier valley landscape. And uh, although the same problem occurred when we added grass in, the thing I noticed is that the virtual shadow maps look a whole lot better than the regular shadow maps, especially for the grass detail in the front. So today's tutorial is all about can we use virtual shadow maps with foliage and still get the performance? So uh, what I've done is I've been looking at this article. I'll put the link in the description below. This is the Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine article on virtual shadow maps. And I went through all of this and looked at how virtual shadow maps work and what uh, the problems are with foliage and how they can be overcome. And I tried various settings. And what it comes down to is basically there's one setting that you can change that really improves performance and probably makes virtual shadow maps usable with foliage. Um, I'll show you another technique as well to give you a little bit more performance as well. So let's uh, go back to the project. And first of all, what I'll do is I'll switch on the, I'll show the FPS in the scene. So at the moment we've got an FPS of around about 77 frames per second and this is using the regular shadow the old shadow maps method so what happens if i go into my project settings edit project settings search for shadow and now if i switch the shadow map method to virtual shadow maps so you can see straight away the shadows especially in the foliage in the foreground look a whole lot better but the um frame rate has come down drastically. It's come down to 20, 22 frames per second. And as you move around in play mode, it gets even more stuttery. So it's basically unusable at this frame rate at the moment. So as I said, I tried all sorts of different settings. In fact, if you look at the console commands, you can see all of these different settings I tried to change. So I looked at clip maps, uh, course pages, radius, shadow radiuses. None of them made a vast difference except for one setting, which is this one here. So this R shadow virtual non nanite, which is foliage, including course pages zero. That makes a whole lot of difference. I won't change it at the moment, but what I'll show you first of all is how you can visualize the um, problem. So if you go to this, uh, the lit menu here, you've got a virtual shadow map section. If you look at cached pages, what you're seeing here is everything that's in green is where the shadows don't have to be recalculated from frame to frame. And as it gets redder, that means it's, it's effectively having to uh, recalculate the shadows each frame. And the reason why all this is red is because of the foliage. And the problem is that foliage moves. So it has a, um, you can see there's a, a sort of wind movement in it. And because of that movement, it's invalidating the cache every frame and having to recalculate it. So that's what's causing the problem. Um, so let's see if we can resolve it somewhat. So let's go back to our lit view and go back to this command. So this non nanite, i.e. Um, the foliage, include in course pages zero. And let's execute that command. And immediately the frames per second has gone up from 22 frames per second to 61. So it's almost gone up threefold from that one command. And the visual fidelity really hasn't changed at all. We still get that those lovely shadows in the foreground. Um, and as I said, I tried a lot of other settings as well. The only other setting which made a little bit of difference was the, if I go in here, 
it was this one here, R shadow virtual use far shadow culling zero as well. So it doesn't seem to make any different, much difference here, but if you had a lot of foliage in the background, that will add a few frames per second as well. So now it's, um, it's completely usable. If I go into play mode with my character, you can see I'm getting sort of 70, 80 frames per second facing this way. And if I face down the valley where all the foliage is, it goes down to about 40. But to be fair, I'd probably reduce the culling distance anyway and blend it more in with the background grass. So uh, that would get rid of that problem. But it's, it's completely usable now just with that one setting, the uh, non-nanite including course pages zero. So that is the main purpose of today's tutorial just to show you that one setting. But while I'm here, I thought I'd show you um, two other things. First of all, that console command that we executed, this uh, virtual non nanite, including course pages zero, every time you load up this level, it won't be, this won't be set to zero. So how do you make it so that this level automatically applies this console command? Well, you do that by using a uh, level blueprint. So for our level here, if you open this up and you'll see I've already done this, you've got an event begin play command here and that gets executed when you open the level for the first time. So all I've done is add in an execute console command node. In fact, I've added two and then you, it's the same as putting the console command here live, but it will be executed when the level is opened. So there's my key command there, non nanite include course pages zero. And I've also included the use var shadow culling zero command there. And that means that if I come in here and press play, it will execute those. Uh, and then they'll, they'll, they'll be available then in the editor from that point onwards as well. So when you're loading up your level, just go into play mode once those commands get executed and you'll be able to move around even in the editor mode. So that was the first extra thing I wanted to talk about. The second thing is, I wonder if we can maybe improve slightly on this as well. So if you look here, we've got the the grass in the far distance. Would it be possible to change the grass in the far distance so that doesn't cast any shadows? Um, so we don't get the red caching issues in the distance. So like, again, let's look at that visualization, virtual shadow map cached page. So as well as the red in the foreground foliage, we've got red here, even up here where there's maybe one or two pieces of grass. So can we reduce the caching problem in the distance by removing uh, shadows from the distant grass? So let's go back to lit mode and go into our grass. So I've got a grass type associated with this ground. So let's just move it over here a bit. And move it over just so I can see the FPS as well. So the main the main grass I've got here, this first one here, has a cull distance of 20,000. I've got two other grasses, but they end before the valley. So the only one I'm really interested in here is this first, this first grass here that ends at the 20,000 uh, units away from the camera. So if I open this up and if I look at the LOD levels here, so we've got, we've got four LODs. Um, LOD zero is the detail in the foreground. LOD three is the uh, distant um, elements there. So if we pick LOD three, and you can see that we have the option here for the material of casting the shadow. So this is per LED shadow casting. So let's remove that. It disappears at the moment. This is a, a bit of a bug. I think you just have to regenerate, reload the level. So it's, um, we'll save that. We'll come over here and reload that level. So go back to the map, reload it again. And can you see that our frame rate has gone up from 70 or was it even 60 
frames per second up to 84. So we've got another uh, big increase, sort of about 20, 25 percent. So we started off at 22 and now we're at 84 here in this area. And if I look at the virtual shadow map cache page, you can see that the red that was all over this hillside has just been reduced to uh, a much smaller area now, uh, probably where the uh, some of the other grass uh, is not being culled. So and again, a bit of a big, big saving there. But has it affected the visual fidelity? Let's go into play mode. And let's um, go down this path and have a look at the shadows. So shadows quite good there, but I'm noticing shadows yeah look at the shadow look at the grass to the right of the character as i move around the shadow disappears so that me that to me means that lod3 is being swapped in very early on in the um in the lod distance cycle so the shadows are popping in and out so what we want to do is we want to make that lod3 to be further away in distance before it appears so that the shadows don't pop in and out like that. So we can do that. Let's um, come out of play mode. So I've still got my uh, grass mesh up here. And at the moment, it's got auto LOD going on. You see this in the LOD settings. It's got auto compute LOD distance. And we're on, LO I've selected LOD3 the lowest level of detail. I can't change the screen size. You see it's 0.10 of a screen size is what it appears. But if I untick auto compute, now I can change the screen size. So let's make that smaller. So instead of 0.1, we'll make it 0.03 and save. And now let's go into play mode. And now when I look around, I can't see that shadow snapping in or out. And you can see it does come in. If you see, you see, if I stand, stand at the end of the path here, if I start to go back, look at the grass at the end of the path. As I get to there, about there, it, move, it, it goes, the shadow. But it's much, uh, it's a much smoother transition now. Certainly I don't notice the shadow popping in and out. And the distant grass doesn't really look that much different on the hillside. And I'm now getting 100 frames per second uh, when I'm facing away from the grass. In this level where there's some mid grass, I'm still getting 92, 93 frames per second. And even over in the distance, I'm getting 55, almost 60 frames per second with that lot of grass in the distance and this is quite an expensive grass as well this uh, this grass has four LODs but uh, the LODs are sort of two and three are not billboard LODs where they're just flat planes they've got quite a few triangles in themselves so I could swap this out for cheaper billboard grass and get even more frames per second so um, I'm kind of changing my opinion of virtual shadow maps and foliage thinking that with these techniques of the in, including course pages zero command and removing shadows in the far LODs, it could be usable and it certainly looks great. So I hope you found today's tutorial useful and uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back with another one soon. Bye for now.